Welcome back, everybody, to the Manila Major Qualifiers. Here, we've got Infamous vs. Enemy GG. My name is Gorgon. I'm joined by Korean Barbecue, and I'm going to take it a little easy during this draft. This is more of a... This is more of a show match at this point. Both Infamous and Enemy GG are out, but there's still honor on the line. Enemy GG got very close to turning a game around. Game number one, and, and we're unable to do so. Let's see how they do game number two. Radiant Korean Star. Barbecue, what are you looking forward to in this match? Neither, neither team really has chances, right? So maybe we'll see some crazy stuff. <laughs> I really noticed that you've uh, managed to let loose a little bit. Um, let's just talk about that <laughs> briefly to start things off. So, Digital Chaos defeated Evernovas in the first game, meaning that they can't have less than uh, five points uh, when their run in the group stage is said and done. And since uh, Enemy GG, I believe the most they could get at this point with that last loss is four points. So they are mathematically eliminated. Infamous already was before since they had lost two series. So for all intents and purposes, as you said, this game is a show match. It is, however, a nice opportunity for both teams to get that good quality practice in, in terms of drafting and executing their lineups. And... Uh, there's there's bright sides. There's positives for both teams from last game. I mean, I think enemy, given the limitations uh, of their lineup, especially after the bad start they had, they still executed very well in the fights going forward. Banana Slam Jamma had some incredible fights where, seemingly against insurmountable odds, they were able to break even or at least keep Infamous on their heels. And you know they had a couple chances to come close to turning that game. And for Infamous, you have to be happy about how their early game execution went. The lanes and the rotations basically went the way they wanted to to keep enemy down. And they end up taking some good team fights as well. Got their cores incredibly farmed, although some of the item choices uh, we might have some questions about. So a lot of positives to take forward from this if you're both teams. And, uh, you know, they won't make it to this major, but your professional Dota player, the struggle probably never stops. And, you don't, you don't, oh, yeah. you don't ever stop trying to get better and play against the best competition you can. So still a good having stage for these guys into, to play. Having gone into these qualifiers as well uh for Infamous and Enemy GG has given them a lot more exposure on this patch has, uh, to... to a variety of teams and remember both of these teams are still playing the dota 2 canada cup which is you know it's an over twenty thousand dollar north and south american tournament and for teams that are regional in this area that that's probably the premier tournament to actually be executing in and neither enemy nor infamous are likely to see inter-regional lands the same way that complexity or digital chaos have a good chance at making on a regular basis so this was sort of pie in the sky for them to get to Manila. Uh, one of those long shot dreams, but just the experience and getting experience against opponents from the Dota 2 Canada Cup in a formal setting like this is pretty rare for North and South American teams because there aren't that many regional tournaments at, for these, these squads. Um, exactly. This might be a time to try out your fun pocket traps. And as you said, these teams aren't exactly going to be globe hopping. And, um, you know, it, again, the prize money for something like Canada Cup is not insubstantial for a team like Infamous from a different uh, economic situation, basically. And, you know, again, talking to Infamous and Frankfurt, getting to know them a little bit, one of the issues that they really had, that they talked about themselves, is the, the, the sense of professionalism, not just talking about some of the darker stuff like throwing games in that, but just having this general attitude that you take everything seriously, that you're not throwing games or just having fun in them because you feel your opponents are beneath you, and that yeah. there's a bigger there's bigger fish out there. There's always a bigger pond, and you have to keep getting better all the time. And so this is kind of a test for them. And, you know, we talked about last game. They could easily have just thrown or folded. They really had nothing to play for as far as the qualifiers went other than maybe being a spoiler. And, you know, can they continue to improve from this tournament even when the games no longer matter? And it, hopefully, you know, we see that steps and professionalism continuing continue to be taken by them and other squads. Yeah, it, a big horrible, quote unquote, with with some of these players that don't make it outside of the region that often is that they do often suffer from hubris and. A lot of them are, are younger kids as well, right? I mean, we're both old guys for esports, but as these guys that are, you know, 17, 18, 19, early 20s start start to age with the game, well, we do typically see them maturing as well. Um, so I'm I'm interested to see as the North and South American scene gets some more old blood, quote unquote, how these players start to adapt and change, just with their personalities as well as their play style. We are going to see. Enemy GG pair up a Ricky and a Faceless Void. That is about as pocket strat as, as you could ask for. For Infamous, 
the Nature's Prophet and Dazzle. We haven't seen a lot of Ricky, but we did see him successfully run in the same position that a bounty hunter might be running in that jungle shutdown support role by, I want to say Empire at the, at the Weplay land? By somebody at Weplay. So it's certainly a hero that some folks have been experimenting with. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if this is a totally different direction of Ricky. So some people have talked about with his recent changes that maybe he has some viability as a carry. So I would not be surprised if there's some kind of situation where they want that Ricky ult to be dealing damage inside of the Chromosphere to ensure that everyone gets hit as many yep. times as possible. And I really wouldn't be surprised if they tried that out here just to see if it works uh, in terms of that combination. And, you know, who knows, that becomes a pocket strat maybe going forward for this team. Yeah, they also have the Moran, and you don't normally see... Ricky's paired up with other invisibility-oriented heroes because it just encourages your opponents to get a gem or other vision. But in this case, that may work out. Just because we know enemy GG have run Mirana recently in the past. Uh, I've heard that they are scrimming with Mirana sometimes as well. And using that Sacred Arrow to set up into the Chronosphere for that extra long stun even after the Chronosphere expires can be... Really effective. Uh, uh, Abaddon is a good response to that Marana setup, though. As long as he's not in the Chronosphere, or at least not the target of that Sacred Arrow stun, he can immediately lift it off with that Aphotic Shield. Yeah, Ricky is also an interesting choice against uh, Nature's Prophet. Um, in, in the sense that this is a hero that has a natural gap closer as a melee to get around those trees early on in lane, if that's indeed where the Nature's Prophet goes. And of course, Nature's Prophet often counts on that being able to TP out to escape. And so if you have the cloud from Ricky that you can cast from, from a decent distance, you can stop him from just TPing out, force him to use a TP scroll, or at least mine those cooldowns. So it's an interesting selection here against Nature's Prophet, who much of his lane viability comes from positioning and annoyance, and Ricky can kind of uh, work his way around that based on his toolkit. Yeah, I, what I'm really excited to see here, not necessarily draft-oriented, is how seriously do enemy GG come into this game, right? Because Infamous came into that last game and put everything on the table. They left it all on the field, so to speak, right? Even though there was no mathematical possibility of them moving forward. And enemy got burnt by that. I'm really curious if enemy just come in and goof around now, or if they are, if they're here to win it. The Lich combo with the Faceless Void is really nasty. Yeah, there's a lot of things are being centered around this void right now. Marana obviously profits tremendously from things being frozen in the Chronosphere. And, you know, but but you get to this point where you kind of need big Chronos, it feels like, to maximize the Ricky ultimate and the Lich ultimate. And if you don't get those, the fight becomes a little bit harder to take in terms of holding your ground uh, against some of these heroes. So I'm interested in seeing what the core picks are for Infamous. Usually this is a team that tends to draft their cores fairly early, but they've decided to hold off here. Uh, so we'll see what they have coming out. Maybe, I don't know, I, I think we see maybe a wild and wacky game here, and that's going to be a lot of fun for us to cast, certainly. Yeah, Infamous are... I I don't can't remember the last time I saw a series Abaddon. And maybe I just missed the game, or a series Luna. The push strategy is real here, though. Look at all the sustain. Abaddon, Dazzle, with the Nature's Prophet, the, the Siege on the Towers, and the early game damage aura. This is not a strategy that I would normally expect to see run in 687 because of the difficulty sieging down those Tier 2s. Uh, and the sunken nature of the Tier 3s makes them more difficult as well. So if you put all your eggs into that early influx of gold basket, you often find yourself reeling by the 25 or 30 minute mark. But there's nothing on the line, right? For Infamous, like, like you said, both teams really have an opportunity here to try something out in a more formal atmosphere outside of a scrim where they know opponents will probably hold on a little bit longer. It is a real game. It is in front of viewers. There is something to be said for that. This could be one of the more interesting games that we see in the America's Qualifiers. Yeah, it's not surprising that they went for a big core such as Luna. I would have even not been totally shocked if they'd gone for, say, Medusa or something even bigger than that, because the support potential from those two heroes, Abaddon and Dazzle, they're extremely good at keeping one single target alive. And Luna does kind of fall into the category of one of these potential 1v5 heroes if she has enough uh, items up to really be able to just control team fights and just dish out an absurd amount of damage by herself. So Infamous, you know, are kind of putting their eggs in that Luna basket more or less. And you mentioned the synergy early on with the push from the Nature's Prophet who can help you block arrows and help reposition fights, maybe even put the Luna in defensive tree if necessary, to help yep. you stop her from being gone on by these melees or by her some time. So they're really building themselves around this Luna, and I'd love to see how they execute this uh, strategy. Enemy GG, okay. I'm just gonna 
say it. What's with all the blue and purple? Nature's Prophet is the only not blue purple hero in this entire draft so far. And yeah, and he's cutting it pretty close. I mean, he's like cyan. His his beard yeah. is like yeah, pretty he's, much he, there. He looks like he's in the process of defecting from green to blue too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's got some aqua in there. Five seconds remaining. It's it's just throwing me off. It, three agility heroes, four agility heroes for enemy GG. You don't normally see that either because because no strength game and no frontliner, and that is definitely the case here. The only frontline potential that they have is BSJ's Illusions, and since 683, or maybe more recently than that, but since some relatively recent change over the last year, you can easily tell which Terror Blade is real and which one isn't. So, enemy GG may find themselves in a situation where they don't have anybody to take the brunt of the damage. So we're going to see some interesting lanes here. That is going to be a support Ricky, not a carry Ricky. And uh, for Infamous, Katara, who's usually their carry player, is on that Abaddon. And their last pickup was a Vengeful Spirit. So it's not going to be a support ABBA. And um, it'll be interesting. Could this be a mid ABBA potentially? And, uh, or or will this be we'll see some kind of dual lane setup maybe? So, yeah. I'm... Yeah, definitely Formation getting come out a more, more interesting draft than we normally see. And immediate smoke out coming from Infamous. We're going to go ahead and run through some of their players here. I guess I'll run through enemy first since they are already out into the field with Flying Zebra taking that fourth spot Ricky around the This is board. a Roche strategy actually coming up from Infamous. It looks like they're going to head ah, right in there. Level 1 Roche. I'm going to skip the player introductions because they changed Roche to not give as much experience, especially early like level 1. It just... I'm curious to see how much it'll probably get everybody up to level 2, which is some advantage, but it's nowhere near the <laughs> advantage it was, and they are going to be seen out here. Yeah, enemy were aware of this. They, they they knew that this was coming, and they sent people out early to scout it, and the, and uh, I think they're what they're doing right now is smart. They're Maybe wait until Roche is down and Infamous are committed before they go in. Yeah. No, here comes the arrow. It's going to hit a tree, actually. BSJ coming in with the illusion. We have a full, full pitched battle breaking out here, and... Uh, you know what would be ironic? I, I kind of have a weird feeling about this, but maybe Infamous, all that they had left to play for in the last oh game was boy. to play Spoiler. And if they can't Infamous, spoil anymore... Yeah, uh, Infamous are going to be moved on here. Excel probably going to die, and he will be the first blood. Now Kotaro just right-clicking. BSJ using an ability here to try and get anything done. He does go down, but now Flying Zebra is going to cut out another kill. And already the action, two for two trade. No Roche grabbed yet. And we are definitely seeing... The uh, the outcomes of neither team really cares too much about this patch, <laughs> right? Like, there's, there's no way this is run by either team in this this way, and they're just gonna come back and fight. <laughs> they are just gonna come back and fight already. Sovereign going in very deep is gonna go ahead and time walk himself out. They don't want to give up this roach. It's an honor thing. KBBQ, it's an honor thing. Yeah, and they're gonna Rosen get this no roach one way or another. They're gonna get this roach. They're gonna come back and just keep going into this. The courier's roach just gonna walk in and put this out. They're gonna give up the courier. No big deal. And look at Sovereign, he's still floating around here. <laughs> the only hero who is actively staying away from the pit right now is BSJ, who's just free farming mid. I zipped away as that Abaddon fell, but did you really need to see that kill? And it's still <laughs> happening! And the Marana's still contesting! There's gonna be that salve that was so important that it was worth killing the courier for. We're six kills in, one minute into this game. At this one time, even if Infamous get this, it's not an advantage, right? Like, they just do not care. It is all about the honor. <laughs> All right, Aegis, squarely on the Luna's shoulders. That gets everybody, yeah, up to level two. So it gives them a small advantage over most of their opponents in terms of levels. Um, but the BSJ in the mid lane is going to be level four by the time anybody gets here, probably. So I kind of suspected this, although I was hoping it wasn't true. But you know, I gave this whole spiel about a uh, professionalism and trying. I, I feel I like, know. like I said, infamous. The last thing that they wanted to play for was to play spoiler. It feels like, and so knowing that their opponents also have nothing left to play for, they just decided to go for this. Or, you know, maybe try this out. We have seen this before in the past. I think in the Korean league, actually. Okay, I'm going to that level one. Sovereign is going to be stunned and nuked down. He will time walk away, but this is just a five-man death ball at this point. 
We Win or lose, it's going to happen league. in 15 minutes. We saw this happen in the Korean League before, where it was just a level 1 5v5, more or less. It was a lightning throw strategy, and they just decided to run together. And they actually almost penetrated uh, the, the high ground. I think almost took a set of Raxes before they were finally repelled. So we're that seeing something course. along those lines here. I don't know mm. if that's going to work here. It feels like yeah. DSJ can almost push faster himself. And, you know, at the right. very least, they're going to get some levels up on these heroes and then just come in and right. you know, they'll, they'll be level 5 or 6 on their course when that, this push finally course, reaches was the tier before. 2. So. 687 as well, where these towers become much harder to push. Um, but yeah, that's infamous. a good point. I mean, that extra three armor feels like a big deal when you're up against level two heroes. That's for right. Sure. And the damage is uh, is up to 25 percent more per hit for the tier twos, and the tier threes are sunken, so you have to come onto the high ground, and and you can get very easily repelled by just two and heroes you have a early you in have the game. A ice armor first lich, knowing that right. this is happening to to keep that tower up. So. I, I suspect the first team wipe here, that infamous experience, will be the end of this. And yeah, I, you know, just just got done talking about that professionalism. This is the way we're going to go. But you know what? These teams, I, they, they, they just need the to right to have some fun. Yeah, they, they really just need to relax. Everyone just have some of the pressure taken off them. And, you know, it's obviously just hard to be a good enough team to get invited to this main qualifier. And, uh, right. you know, and, well, and the, the deal is here, too. You, you do have to keep in mind that... There, there is nothing on the line. They do probably care a little about the viewer experience, but they're also probably aware, with nothing on the line, uh, the viewers that are stopping by are probably looking for some cheese, some antics, and some memes. You know, oh, yeah, it's the, like... This, this is very... This is part of the viewer experience here. I, th right. I think you maybe want to see this, so... I, I do appreciate that Infamous came in with the uh, with the intention to just ruin it for everybody else. Like, be as gatekeeper, be as uh, spoiler as they possibly could. But as <laughs> soon as it's over, they're like, screw it. Death ball or nothing. To Madre Come Amagesas and to Banyera. Moving forward. <laughs> well, they kind of said, if we can't get to that major again, we'll make sure you guys do it. So. <laughs> but you're not better than us. It's, it's basically all they wanted to say <laughs> to enemy GG. Like, yeah, we're not moving forward, but there's no way in hell you are either. And still the death ball. BSJ's just ignoring it. He's chilling up here. Let's talk about the infused six. raindrops. We see that in the dazzle. I'm surprised this item hasn't been picked up more, actually. Uh, because It's been getting picked up a ton in uh, China, is my understanding. Not that I've watched a lot of those games, because I've been casting in every other region, basically. But... Um, my understanding right. is that Chinese players really highly value it. In North America, we basically never see it. I'm also surprised by that. You know what? That might explain some things with regards to my lineage. I did a patch breakdown with uh, Scant and Witcher, and I was absolutely in love with this item. My, my, uh, I know you my were, because you messaged that. me when this item came out, and you said, uh, good luck stopping me mid now, you scrub. Infuse <laughs> raindrop, I'm invincible. Lo, 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 lo. Yeah, that, was my, gives... that was my patch note from you. <laughs> It gives an absurd amount of regen given its cost, and also blocking those nukes I feel is big for basically all lanes. Like if you're an off laner, it insulates you from a nuke early on by like a level 3, level 4 hero, uh, basically. And for any kind of prolonged fight, anybody that fears ganks from these quick bursts, it's it's just really good for, for just about anybody. And I'm surprised it hasn't been picked up more uh, everywhere, and you know, I'm not surprised that the Chinese love that item as much as they do, and I, I wonder if it'll actually catch on. Obviously not in this setting where you've got two raindrops on the Dazzle. Well, and then again, it's given him quite a bit of mana regen, so he can just keep on healing right through us. They continue to clear out these towers, uh, do infamous. This, this five man has not been stopped just yet. Yeah, this is just going to continue to be death ball until it's high ground defense. And the question is, can enemy get enough onto BSJ for... Oh, okay, we're going to see the reflection along with the Chronosphere, and immediately everybody from infamous dies. This is Shakespeare. This is Faust. Nobody gets away. Mental Spirit will be taking some damage as well, and will be going down Sovereign, closing that gap. Yep, that's the end of that, <laughs> says Enemy. You can take everything, but our off lane is sacred. God damn it, this is. I never thought pure I'd ever ground. hear someone say this is Shakespeare in a Dota cast as my co caster, so I, you know, I'm glad I lived to that moment to have that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I feel like I say that a lot now that I think about it. It's a, you know, sometimes you just gotta reference the old, the old times. That now Kotaro just running in, because why the hell not? He's only level three, but, uh, you know, he's big and bold, playing those edges as we've talked about so many times. Sovereign getting caught out a bit. He does have a time walk. Oh, the stun will save him, actually. 
Slayer has a haste, so he's fine. And now the Ricky throwing down the smoke for the mischance. Meanwhile, BSJ! He just continues to do his thing. And Infamous are not deterred, Korean Barbecue. Infamous are going to return to top is five. Vlad's is up on the Luna. You know, that Dota is going to have a lot of fun with some of the item choices uh, right. from this game, that's for sure. But, um, you, you know, let's talk a little bit about Not Today and Dragon Guild, because that is the next match that we're going to be casting to let our viewers know. And that match does matter because Group A has not yet been really taken firm shape just yet. And uh, so both teams have a chance to move on there. I think Not Today played one series yesterday, and I believe they went 2-0 and in that series. They managed to win that series. And... Uh, Drag Neil, as far as I know, I think they went one tie, one loss. So both teams still very much alive, trying to make a dent there uh, in that Group A. So yeah, that'll be next up on our cast docket uh, yeah. when this game is over. So after this game, I'll probably throw over to some of the European games for a little bit in the host. If you guys just want to hang on this channel for some Dota, we do have some uh, some games, as Korean Barbecue mentioned, coming up that will presumably not be five man death ball for Infamous. If Infamous actually win this game with this strategy. I might cry. Like, there's there's just no way. Well, there's a Chronosphere up. There's not yet a Chain Frost because this Lich is level 3, so... <laughs> right? It's not even 10 minutes in, so... There's a mech. You know, you know what? If Maybe if you park... If you make okay, sure that here's the a Dazzle... Chronosphere. Sovereign is going to move in and just do solo right clicks with the not Chronosphere not getting anything though. done. not there to mop up. And... Okay, that, that's a big Chronosphere down. There's no ults left. If, I think if you keep the supports back, keep them alive, they might have enough left in the tank. To there really... we go. And there's going to be the Grave going out onto the Vengeful Spirit. Vengeful Spirit trying to get away. Will not be able to. One last right click from Sovereign will mop it up, as you mentioned now. Greedy is going to move on to Slayer, who gets a leap over the edge. And Pathful Train for the save. And now Frozen moving around. Uh, he is going to run away from his team and be hunted down. Do you want to build a snowman in hell, Frozen? Because that's where you're going. All right. Flying Zebra just running out for no apparent reason. Why the hell not? BSJ forced to retreat. There is a ward down here. Sovereign also getting away. They tried to bring down that Terror Blade, which would have represented a significant amount of experience. from. They're going to come out to the high ground here. We thought that yeah, it was the end when this. they were repulsed at the tier one, but apparently not. Just being proven wrong left and right here is, uh, are we seeing the formation of a new meta here, Gorka? Uh, this is clearly <laughs> 6.81 B reborn is what this is. Flying Zebra now moving on. No, Excel getting very close, but the mechanism from all the tower gold keeps him up. Excel will end up going down before he manages to get anything else off. And now the, the arrow will be dodged as Greedy is torn between moving on Sovereign and moving on the Mirana. Mirana is going to come around the backside as Sovereign comes in. Manages to get one more kill moving forward. BSJ is just out leveling everybody. He's got level seven. He's a big, scary monster. Greedy going to be forced to teleport home and say, see you later, Kataro. Adios. As Luna is going to be one sacrificial lamb and Kataro not long for this world. Also goes down. Still no Rax Falls, but Greedy teleports home, then uses his teleport ability to come back out and try to split down this bottom lane. Here's the big problem with this strategy, other than it's ridiculous and uh, ineffective, <laughs> is that Infamous already got all of the tower gold that they're likely to get on this map uncontested. But the big problem with that is, at this stage in the game, they can't actually get that many functional items with that, because they're still just going to get their early game items that are usually purchased with the intention of making pushes easier. If you get yeah, those you items get your mech with power gold, who cares, right? Yeah, you get your mech arcanes, you got the drum and blight sewn up on the Abaddon, but you don't have the levels and ultimates, which actually does kind of matter uh, for this team, actually. I mean, if they had that weave up... You know, in these big, like, just team oh, fights, yeah. I think it would matter quite a bit. Potentially the swap as well to save someone out of Chronosphere. And, of course, the Abaddon could be a better frontliner with his ultimate. So, no but, you know, knowledge Gordon, being I purchased think, by them. It, you know, Gordon, I think I think they got tired of hearing you talk about how long it took to take the Tier 2s. And they're just like, you know what? We're going to go and stack all these Tier 2s before 10 minutes so that that Gorgon guy stops talking about how invincible they are. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, this is just... The biggest... They're going to go back to this top lane. 
They're, Why they not? Are There's here. no tower they do not to meet them. There's so. a roach that they could take now, right? Like, they could do something. There That's is true. an outside they, they objective that they could take. They have to watch out for this chronosphere. They have to play around this big chronosphere. Lich still does not have chain frost just yet, so they have to watch chronosphere out for this chronosphere. Chronosphere is going to be coming out here. Sovereign is looking for the opportunity. There it is. He grabs three. BSJ sitting on the outside will immediately get a kill onto the Ventral Sphere. No! The grave save from the outside! Ventral Sphere will be walking away, but there's going to be the Ricky coming in, throwing down his ultimate as well. That is going to be a dead Luna. Greedy, probably not long for this world. The Lich does get the Chain Frost in the middle of the fight. There's going to be the summonables for no apparent reason. And Ventral Spirit, after the Grave save, will be the only hero to escape. Infamous, however, did manage to plant some high ground vision there onto enemy. Obviously, uh, that's going to like, High ground here. vision, and there's the GG. And they're all just going <laughs> to rage quit out. It was fun while it lasted, folks. All right. That's all we've got. Both these teams are out. More than likely, we're looking at Digital Chaos coming forward out of this group. We're looking at the Open Qualifier, the second tier Open Qualifier team as well. FDL moving forward from this group almost certainly, if not certainly. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I believe that it's a guarantee at this point.